Windows 10 will be the last version. Windows 10 preview testers getting a free retail version, a new six terabyte SSD, a new operating system made for quantum computing. The FCC stands firm against whiny internet providers and okay, it's a long list. Let's just roll the intro. The new Windows 10 might just be the last version from Microsoft. Confirmed by executive Jerry Nixon, they plan to move towards a modular design that allows them to change or upgrade different items as they go along. So for example, let's say Windows 10 comes out, it's completely modular. Some of these modules could include things like the start menu, the file browser, or desktop management, etc. Moving forward, if Microsoft wanted to strip away the start menu again completely, they wouldn't have to actually release an entire new operating system. They could just write an update Date to include a different design or function to that specific module or set of modules that support it. To be honest, this could either be good or bad for us. It could be good to always have the latest and greatest operating system that evolves with your PC, but bad because we won't be able to avoid the horrible releases. I mean, imagine going to your computer one day, downloading the little update, and bam, Windows Vista all over again. Also, there's a chance that this can move to a service or subscription base where you get nickeled and dimed to death with every little change. I mean, who, who really knows at this point? I personally find it interesting all around though, and I'm going to embrace it hoping for the best. Mainly because, well, I still have my Windows 7 CD available to me right off to the side. Are you a Windows 10 preview tester? Well, good news, because Microsoft just confirmed in a tweet that preview testers will be able to upgrade for free to a full retail version after it's released. I mean, why not? They're giving away to all the pirates for free, so why not testers, right? So far, little is known about how this will work. Like, are they gonna get the most basic version? Will it be a full retail license? Or is it only gonna be good for a set amount of time? One thing is certain though, Microsoft wants to make sure that everybody and their dog is running Windows 10. It's like a secret plot to take over the digital world by infecting every computer computer with the new operating system. In other news not related to Windows 10, a company based out of Japan, Fixstars, will be releasing a 6 terabyte SSD by the end of July. These drives are going to be using the 15 nanometer flash memory and run through regular SATA ports, giving us the 540 megabyte read and 525 megabyte write standards that we're all used to. No information yet on the cost, but they are releasing a 1 terabyte version priced at $820. So if we were to do the math, take $820 multiplied by 6, we get a completely irrelevant number because that's not how things work. Quantum computing has been the talk for a while, ever since Google announced buying into one being built. If you don't know what it is, I will link in the description. But for now, you should just know that quantum computing is way different than regular computing and thus brings new challenges to the table to make it work correctly. One of these challenges is having an operating system capable of running on a quantum environment while still being able to talk to a regular PC. And of course, by a regular PC, I mean a huge supercomputer that costs like millions of dollars, but still. The new operating system developed by Cambridge Quantum Computing is called T-Line Kit or T-Kit. Now, while the news in itself can seem a little anticlimactic, it's still a big step in achieving a real functional quantum computer that can correct its own errors and compute things on a level we could only dream about. Things like designing brand new drugs and materials from scratch just by trying trillions of combinations until one works, or by cracking the hardest encryption key in only a few seconds, maybe even allowing evolution of the first artificial intelligence. Which, you know, now that I kind of say it like that, I can't really help but think of Terminator. When the FCC threw Title II in the faces of all internet providers, they promptly ran to their lawyers and started crying foul. Now, I could go on a long rant about how these providers are acting, but this video is about quick stories, not a 30 minute venting session. So long story short, the internet providers are trying to delay the new regulations and almost seeming like they're trying to negotiate with the FCC by telling them what they are or are not okay with. Well, the FCC stepped up again last Friday on the 8th and said, stop your bitching, it's gonna happen, get over it. I mean, you know, in fancy political words, of course. So you heard him, Comcast, STFU. A team of anonymous developers have made a malware program capable of infecting your graphics card. Originally done in Linux, now working in Windows, and soon available on OS X. They made this thing just to raise awareness to the fact because so far nobody normal has even considered this as a possibility. It's like the old west in computing when the first person wrote the first virus for the first computer to be infected leaving that user dumbfounded that anybody would ever want to do that. Not to sidetrack anymore, but the first virus was written in 1971 by Bob Thomas. It was called the Creeper Virus. It like, popped up and said, I'm a creeper, catch me if you can, or something like that. 
Anyways, this new graphics card malware is called Win Jelly, and it acts like a Trojan to gain access to the entire computer without any current form of antivirus being able to detect it. So yeah, there's that. Do you have an old hard drive sitting on a shelf or in a drawer somewhere with a bunch of valuable information on it that you would expect to be there next time you plug it in? Well, as long as your method of storage is at least somewhat rational, you have a fairly good chance of it still being there when you boot it up 5 or even 10 years from now. The same can't be said for SSDs. A new article that I will link in the description below outlines how storage temperatures can affect the already short amount of time an SSD can retain data without power. I mean, we're talking like 1 to 2 years here. So, if you must store a digital cold copy of your family photos, don't do it on an SSD. Before I leave the topic of cold storage, you should meet ChillHub, the world's first Linux-powered smart refrigerator. This thing comes packed with two USB ports, built-in Wi-Fi, and a bunch of internal sensors that can be viewed or controlled from a computer. With this new technology, you can visualize everything in your fridge, change temperatures, or even ride a virus that spits water on anybody that walks by. Retail will be $1,000, but pre-orders are only $800. So what do you think? Is this stupid or cool? Leave a comment below. I know this video has been longer than most of my other videos, but hey, there's a lot to talk about. So if you liked it, make sure to show a little love, click the like button below. And if you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe. Now working in Windows and soon available on OS X. They meant our smart refrigerator. This thing's come. Make sure to click the like button.